Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Andy, Mark, and we've just finished playing Role Player. Now, as the name suggests here, you're kind of rolling an RPG player, and obviously the play on words here is that it's a like a role playing game in that sense. Except this isn't really a role playing game. It's just that part of an RPG where you would kind of create your character initially. So throughout the course of this great game, I have created a devoted eccentric halfling thief so at the start of the game you pick a kind of um, race and you pick a class and a backstory and an alignment and then essentially the way the game works is you're drawing dice from a bag that come out here and you draft them from these tiles in the middle and then you have to fill them out in this grid here to get points in various ways so because I was a thief I have to try and get my strength, dexterity, constitution, etc. to these particular values by the end of the game. So I'm trying to put numbers in here so that my strength adds up to at least 14. My intelligence, for example, had to be exactly 17. So that was quite difficult to hit, uh, but I think I did manage to do it. Yep, if you can see the dice here, they add up to 17. Um, but the way you actually sort of place the dice initially is, let me just remove some of these so you can see how it works. Um, I would look at one of these ones and I might decide I'm going to take this dice because for whatever reason this is going to help me. And this one has a coin on it. The second and third ones have a coin which is very helpful so you're going to need that to buy cards in a moment. So I take the second one and the other people take theirs and then I place my dice somewhere. So if I stuck it here I again get to activate the constitution row which will either add one or take one off from one of the numbers that on here. So then I could immediately turn this up to a do, a two. So you can see the reason I've got quite a lot of high dice here is because I've been manipulating the dice with all these various abilities as you place them. So if you place one on the strength row, you get to turn the dice upside down. On the dexterity row, you get to swap two dice in two different positions. That adds one or subtracts one. That lets you re-roll one of the dice. This one lets you move one sort of up, down, left or right. And that one gets you a bit of money when buying cards. But then on a subsequent turn, if I manage to place a dice in a final spot, the final spot on each row lets you get gold. So that's another way of getting gold. I take a couple of gold from the bank here. And then after we've placed our dice, you then get to buy a card from the market deck in the order of the card you've picked. So you might want to go first here, but the dice when you place them are always placed lowest to highest. So this is always going to be the worst dice in that sense. So some interesting decisions to make there. Then you buy a card from the market, the cost in gold is just at the top right here, and they're each going to do various things. So some of them are going to get give you endgame victory points, like this one. Some of them are weapons, which might give you special abilities. Uh, and you're trying to acquire, let me just quickly explain the different types of cards. So weapons, which give you abilities. Armor set, so if you get lots of types of armor in the same set, you're going to get points for that. Endgame scoring cards, essentially, which will have give you points for different things. So, for example, this card gave me points if I had at least four of the same color in one column. Uh, those are the trait cards. And then you have these ability cards that you can use throughout the game. You kind of tap them to use them. But one of the interesting things is when you do it, the little arrow here means my um, what was it alignment thing moves one space along here. And if it's on the right here, I can't move it any further right, so I can't trigger this ability again until I've kind of managed to move this back by some other ability. So there's interesting decisions to be made there. And depending on where it finishes, you get a certain amount of points or negative points at the end of the game. Uh, so you try and fill up your grid and then check all your points according to different scoring things at the end. And who has the most at the end is the winner. What do we think? Um, I like it. I sort of say I picked this, picked this up uh, over the weekend um, after deliberating for quite some time whether to actually pick this up or not. But it was uh, nice to get it cheap enough to warrant buying it. And yeah, I do like it. It's um, it's got a sort of like a, a reasonable humour level of the initial layout of your sort of um, thing of being like an exonerated truth-seeking uh, wizard elf who then becomes weak and courageous <laughs> as the game progresses. Um, yeah, it's got some um, some interesting decisions of where you place the dice, which powers you activate. Because also at the start of the game, um, you draw between six and eight dice each, depending on how many players, and place them onto the grid um, without activating any of the abilities as your starting setup. Uh, which is also interesting because you could place them all in a couple of rows or all in the first column depending on which which bonuses you want to be able to activate throughout the game. 
and those bonuses can be quite crucial um, of what you've got available to manip manipulate the dice into the values that you need. Um, the alignment thing, as Jonathan mentioned, is interesting because um, all your skill cards rely on your alignment. So you're trying to manipulate your alignment back and forth to use your skill cards accordingly, ultimately ending on the three-point value. Um, yeah, it's got so, so it's got some nice decisions on what dice you take if you go first to buy cards or not. I'm, I'm sort of unsure about ultimately how much replayability it's got. Um, I think it's got a thing if you don't play it that often, um, it's got probably quite a lot of replayability. And I'm also looking forward to the expansion because I believe, if I remember what the expansion does, uh, is adds things to fight. I think. So it gives you stuff to do with, I think, what, you've, what your character current stats are. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Mark? Yeah, I thought it's quite neat as a small... Sorry, fill it. It's like an hour-long dice roller placement but with lots of enough options going along for, for enough thinking to go on. It's not like super deep, but it's not super light either. And it's certainly a game that... I guess you could introduce this to like a DD player and then lap it up as a as a game as like an introductory game. So I don't think it's that complex. It's it's fairly self explanatory and it works quite well. I mean, like I said, there's lots of options. There's different methods of scoring because you balance in between doing your class and doing the stats you want and like scoring end game points. So we all scored very di in different methods and stuff. So yeah, it's quite cool. It's just, it fits a very nice niche of around an hour. Bit, uh, maybe a little bit on the lucky side, but I suppose the nature dice rolling, but it's, it's all fun. Rating? I'll give it a seven and a half, I think. I quite enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, I'll give Ready? it a seven and a half to an eight. All right. Yeah, I thought it was great, actually. Um, it's a nice family weight. The theme might be a bit polarising, you know, <laughs> Granny's not necessarily going to want to <laughs> sort of create a role-playing character. Um, but in terms of how difficult it is to understand, you know, I could certainly play this uh, with my family, you know, parents and kids as well, and I'm sure they'd really enjoy it. Um, in terms of role-playing games, I always thought creating the character was the most fun part of it anyway, and it's like that whole part <laughs> in a game. So I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. You'll find as you start placing the dice initially, you've got quite a bit of freedom about where the dice can go, and it's fairly easy. But as the game goes on and those spots fill up, it becomes harder and harder to sort of match all the different requirements. You're like, oh, I'm not quite sure if I can fit this here or fit this there. But those abilities you keep triggering as you place the dice are really important. And if you think about it carefully, you can kind of often work out a way of getting what you want. So yeah, I've got an eight out of 10. Thought it was great. All right, thanks for watching. That was Roleplayer.